Right, and the other big issue of the week, of course, emerged from the Supreme Court in London. Judges there ruling unanimously that the Scottish Government does need Westminster's permission to hold an independence referendum. So, with the legal route to India Ref 2 now well and truly blocked, what is the direction of travel for the pro-independence movement from here? Well, the deputy leader of the SNP, Keith Brown, joins me in the studio now. Good morning, Mr Brown. Morning. Before we get on to independence, uh, I hope you heard a lot of what was just said there, a fairly bleak assessment of the state of the NHS. Any reflections on that? I, I couldn't hear much of it because of the sound quality, but uh, of course it's a serious situation. I think that's been acknowledged by the Health Secretary. The priority now is to try and get a pay deal over the line to make sure we can keep people at work. But of course the structural uh, situation in the UK whereby the health consequentials very much relate to what the UK government's priority is mean that I think for years now we've failed to match other European countries. It's one reason why I think we have to be independent to make sure we can make our own choices on the resources that the NHS what they were, What we were hearing from, from our two contributors there were actually what we need now is a big grown-up conversation encompassing everything, encompassing reform, encompassing the whole lot. When we talked about reform this week from this leaked document, there was uproar from, from many sources. Your government very clearly and very robustly saying we're not looking at a two-tier health service, believe that. But, but do you, I was asking Leila Peel, did she think that the, the kind of deification of the health service, if you like, the fact that it is seen as completely untouchable, is actually partly what's holding this back? Well, I think we should have a wide-ranging conversation, but I think it's very important to underline the fact that both the First Minister, Hamza Youssef, has said we we are not going to detract from the, the single focus of being free at the point of use. But yes, of course, we should have that conversation. Right. To the other issue of the day, then, the push for independence. The legal route, as we said, now dead and buried. I want to get into what happens from here. De facto referendum is uh, the phrase we've become used to hearing now. I don't understand what that means. Well, first of all, can I say that we are in a, an absurd situation just now. So I remember as an undergraduate studying the doctrine of the mandate. I don't remember that mandate being differently applied in Scotland so that we can have successive elections with majorities and huge votes for an independence referendum and that being denied. So that's absurd and that has to change. And that's how we got yeah, but here. We are where we are. The sec well, the second point is, where, where are we at now? So we're now being told this week, this is just how absurd it is by people like Douglas Ross, that we do have a voluntary union. Uh, we have the right to leave, but he won't tell us what that uh, route is. Sure. I mean, the absurdity of it, it's like going to the police and saying, I'd like to do something in a lawful way, and the police say, no, no, of course. I, I, so that's that's. I, I just want to, we've, we've heard this for the last three days, all these discussions, we've pl plenty of coverage of that. What I really want to do with the few minutes we've got left is actually look at where we might go. So can, you, can we just discuss what our de facto referendum will be? Well, so first of all, we will stand in that election on the platform of independence for Scotland. As you we're always now, we're do. We're now, yeah, we're now hearing, though, from other parties that you, you can't do that. Political parties cannot stand on the platform they want. We will do that. So having been to the highest uh, legal well, court... Nobody's telling you you can't stand oh, yes, for independence. Oh, yeah, right. You always stand for you independence. You can hear many comments saying, oh, it's not right that the SNP should stand on this platform to have the, the independent de facto referendum. So we will do that. And having been to the highest legal court in the land, we'll now go to the highest court in the land, the people of Scotland, who will take the decision, and if they vote for independence, then that's what we will have. Right. Except, you're right, the other parties will say this, we don't recognise this as any kind of a referendum because there are all sorts of issues at stake, like the crumbling health service, for example, and you can't just hijack this and use it as, a, as one issue that suits you. Well, they have denied every other opportunity. The problem here is the UK government denying democracy. They've denied the mandate, as I've just said. They know that there's a mandate for it from the Scottish people. They have said in 2014, both before and after the referendum, that okay. power lies with the people of Scotland. If that is the case, then they have the right to vote for independence so, at so the election. Help me visualise this then. So you're campaigning on one issue. It's a single issue campaign. So what, a one-page manifesto? Well, we have said, the First Minister said, we will have a, a conference uh, uh, for ourselves, we'll have a, an SNP conference early in the new year. Other parts of the SNP movement will also be discussing this and we'll come forward with further details. But the principle will be, being denied every other legal opportunity by the UK government, you don't even want to talk about it, we will use this as a route to achieve well, independence well, for why Scotland. Do you, I mean, she said, in fact, early spring is when you'll have this conference. You're just kicking the can down the road, aren't you? It's another six months you're buying. Why, why do you have to wait until spring to discuss with your party? What you're, she's already said, this is going to be the general election. It's going to be a 50% of the vote plus one. It's not going to be a majority of seats won. You know exactly how this is going to work. Are you not just stalling for time here? Because it kind of suits you. No, I think, it, well, we already said, as you say, the principles which will apply, but there are more details to be worked out. And we're having to do this now because it's been denied at every other route. What, I don't what know, more why, details, I don't, I'm not sure what, why the conversation is much more out. about this than it should be about the absurd denial of democracy from the UK government. People should be challenging that. I mean, that, that is, that's why we're in this situation. All the different nostrums of democracy have been thrown aside by this UK government. 
and we're having to find a route through to allow the people of Scotland to express their will. Yeah, I mean, was, we, which I should say here, we did ask the UK government to come on, we asked for Michael Gove, we asked for Alistair Jack, they weren't available. So anyway, here we are. Um, what they would say, I'm sure, is you can't produce any real evidence that suggests that actually the majority of Scots want independence. And until you can, why should they listen to you? I mean, time to stop complaining and start convincing, actually, is what you should be doing now, isn't it? Oh, I think convincing has got to be part of what we do. We'll build that campaign in the run-up to the election. But I think that's wrong. I think they, they know they're going to lose this. That's why they're doing everything they can to twist democracy, to refuse the opportunity for the people of Scotland, because they know they're going to lose. And even just this week, another poll just after the ruling from the Supreme Court showing 51% uh, support for an independence uh, vote at the general election. People would vote SNP to achieve independence. So they're scared. That's the point. Do, I mean, if you really wanted a referendum now? Why wait two years? Why subject the public to two more years of constitutional gridlock? Why not collapse Holyrood, hold a Scottish parliamentary election and use that as your de facto referendum? You could do that tomorrow. Literally tomorrow, you could you could pull the parliament down. No, we couldn't. Uh, you have to have a two-thirds majority in the Scottish Parliament to have a fresh the election. The first minister could resign. Well, they need to go through all sorts of other processes by electing another first minister. We have we're in the middle of the. Uh, yeah, but you could do it. You, could, you don't have to wait two years. No, you couldn't because you need two-thirds of a majority to do that. And we do want to have a referendum this year. We could do that still if the UK government just agreed to the proper route they've agreed in the past. They're they've gonna... stated their, their well, they've stated they're in support of that. That is a quick way to do it. That's the reasonable way to do it. That's okay. a democratic way to do. it. OK. Um, in this de facto referendum, the votes of other parties, do you count them? Is ALAPA in with you? Are they all counted as uh, support, uh, you know, pro-independence votes or is it just SNP? Do SNP have to get 50% of the vote plus well, one? I, I'm the deputy leader of the SNP. We are discussing our approach to this. Other parties will say if their votes can be used in that way as well. That's up to them to do that. Okay. And as I say, we'll come to that after we've had our conference. If you lose, is that it? If well, you don't get 50% plus well, one, the, the very is it all over? Is, of course, we, if you lose, then we accept that. The simple fact is I believe in self-determination for Scotland. If you believe in self-determination as a principle, you can't have somebody else telling you when and how you can exercise that right. So that right will always exist, the right of the people. So of every referendum is a de facto, every election is a de facto referendum, because you're going to use it to go and talk to Westminster about what happens next. No, anyway, we haven't stood, the majority we haven't stood an election, although even Margaret Thatcher acknowledged in the 1980s if a majority of Scottish MPs were elected in the ticket for independence, Scotland would get its independence. Very quickly, is this, I mean, do you, in the meantime, in the, in the next two years, talk to Labour about, you know, more powers, what might happen under a Labour government, or is this a zero-sum game? Well, we talked to the Labour Party supporters, 40% of whom are led to believe are sympathetic towards independence. The Labour Party itself, Anna Sauer, doesn't want to have that conversation, but we'll continue talking to anybody that might be interested in independence for Scotland. All right, Keith Brown, we will all be talking about this, won't we? Uh, at, at considerable length uh, for the months, probably uh, the years to come. Thank you very much indeed for coming in this morning.